What's up guys, Welton here, and as game developers I think we can all agree that we are always trying to get better and grow. In this video I'm going to be sharing three principles that I have figured out over the course of my eight years of game development that I think will help any game developer, whether they are new or professional and highly experienced, uh, in their path of becoming an even better game developer. So, stick to the end and let's hop straight to it. When you are trying to sell something or market a product, you need to have something about that product that separates it from all other products. And this is gonna be why the consumer wants to buy your product specifically. Um, this, is a very, uh, this is a very known thing. Uh, so I don't want to stress this too much, but what is not as known is for artists, um, you know, for artists, this is called the theme. And the thing is, is when you have a differentiating factor, it, you need to, especially in art, you need to bring everything back to that differentiating factor. You need to make sure that almost everything in your art, specifically in your game, uh, somehow linked to that theme. Um, and the way that you do this is every time you're adding something new or, or you're changing something, you have to go back and ask yourself, okay, what does this kind of, what does this kind of communicate to the player? And if it's not communicating my theme, if it's not communicating my differentiating factor, um, then how can I make it communicate that theme? How can I make it communicate that differentiating factor? And if you can't answer those questions, if you if you can't make something relate back to the what your game, what makes your game special, then don't don't put it in. That's I, I mean you might be able to. I mean there might be some things, but just simply really think about it. And if it really doesn't help you in communicating a specific theme, don't put it in. When I started making video games when I was 11 and I was in sixth grade, ah, something like that. I mean, I know for sure that I started this game in sixth grade. I don't know if I was 11 in sixth grade. Um, but when I started, I started, there was this one game that I was working on and I had this huge concept for it. I, when I say huge, I mean, think colossal, like Titanic. Um, I had, not the shit. <laughs> I had this journal that was filled, filled from cover to cover with ideas. It was written out the entire story. I had characters drawn out, everything. Uh, amazing, you know, like that's cool. That's cool and all. But I'm one person. Um, and I believe this was going to be the game, you know, like I believe that this was going to be world changing and that I had to, like, I was like Moses bringing, bringing some sort of truth and going to, going to bring the promised land of video games to, to all the, all the players in the world. Um, and that's not, the, that's not true. That's not the case, especially since I had just started game developing. You got to get that out of your head. Like that's not a, that's not a possibility. I worked on this game for three years from sixth grade to ninth grade. I was work. I started it in sixth grade and I finally, and thankfully dropped it in ninth grade. Um, and by within three years, I had gotten l absolutely nowhere. Like, I mean, it was playable, but you know, it, it did something, but it had, and it was not matching up to anything of the concepts that I imagined because I was simply trying to put too much into it. Um, and there's a very, there's, there's a very important lesson to be, to, to get from this is that one, you don't, you don't need to put all your marbles in one basket. You're not going to make one game that's going to be drastic, that's going to change everything because your journey is not as, is not as, is your journey is not making a single game. Your journey is your development as a game developer. You're after, after you finish one game, you need to start another one and you're going to make it even better and more engaging and more creative and more, uh, lasting and have more of a lasting impression on the player than the last one. So no one game is ever going to be your magnum. It shouldn't be. That's the key is that it shouldn't be. Your focus should be growing as a developer, not making the perfect game, make a good game but you don't need to make a perfect game. The second thing to get from the magnum opus fallacy is that, um, P this is something I, I figured out a couple, uh, I think a couple years ago, is that we don't, we don't 
consume art to feel like we're in the real world. Um, we, we don't want to play a video game and feel everything. Like, that's not why we play video games. We don't play video games to feel like we're in the real world. And so, you don't need to have all these super uh, intricate mechanics and all these different um, uh, conflicting themes. Um, because when we play a video game, we want a very small packet. We want we want a focused and we want something focused in on the very specific aspect that it's trying to give us. Which also goes back to our differentiating factor and having a theme. Um, is that really? And I, this is a overused cliche, but it's very true, and you have to think about it. Take it to heart. Uh, less is more. Less is definitely more. When I was working on Battle Shapes, um, this is a game I released, uh, geez, last year. Last year, July 4th of last year, it came out. Um, when I was working on it, and I finished it, or I, I thought I had finished it, I realized something very important, and that was that it was boring. You know, like I, you know, I had a theme uh, that I was following. Yeah, obviously not perfectly. I'm I'm a growing developer just like you. You know, uh, but I had a theme that I was following, um, and it was you know I I was keeping it simple, um, but it was boring, and uh, I was trying to figure out why it was boring, and I and this is when I came up with this idea. I believe that as we get older, at least me specifically, and I think this applies to other game developers as well, but as we get older, um, we we let the art that we've been consuming, the games that we've been playing, specifically AAA games and stuff, we let these we let these arts um, cloud our original creativity when we were younger. Because when I used to play games when I was really young, I used to play them and say, Oh, I would do that so much more. I would do that so differently. Uh, if, if I could, if I could change this game, I would add this, I would take this out. Um, and what I noticed is that I, I, I didn't do that with my own game. I wasn't doing that with battle shapes. Uh, and that's when things change. I feel like that's when I, Battleships went from being something boring, at least personally to me, uh, to something that I was proud to put my name on and put it out there. It's because I started, look, I looked at it and I was like, you know what? Um, I'm hearing, you know, I can, I'm bringing that kid out in me. And I'm like, man, I really want to change this. This would make it so much more interesting. I, if, I, if only I could change this. And guess what? I can change it because I'm the developer. I, now I'm the developer. I'm making the game. And so um, I was able to get out of that. I was able to get out of that boring funk. And this is something we have to all watch out for, not just as game developers, but as artists is as you're making, as you're crafting, as you're making your art and you're getting older, you're losing your creativity. Uh, not really, but you're, you're becoming rough and you're, you're becoming too mature and too, too professional and you are, you're getting calluses and you want to, you want your game to be successful and you want it to, to be accepted by as many crowds as possible. And so you want the most amount of money, but it's not all about the money. It's not always about the money. You, you got to listen to the younger version of yourself that didn't care about money, that just liked it because you were passionate about it. And of course, I'm sure that, especially if you're a new game developer, you're still very passionate about it. I've been doing this for, for eight years, and not that, I'm, not that I'm anything special, but seriously, I've been doing it for eight years, and I feel like that gives me something. You know, like I've been working on games for eight years, and I can feel that I'm getting too professional. I can feel that I'm getting too mature about it. And so every now and then I have to take a step back and listen to that voice inside my head, that younger version of me and go, you know, if I was a developer, I'd change this and then I'd change it. <laughs> all right, guys, if you feel like this video helped you at all and you enjoyed what I had to say and you want to see more videos like this, please leave comments below. Let me know what else you want me to talk about um, and like this video. And if you're not subscribed, then I don't know what you're doing. Subscribe. Um, and I do, I am aware that we've, we've broken 300 subscribers, which is freaking awesome. And I'm excited. Next goal is hitting 500 subscribers. Um, but I owe you guys a video. I'm going to next Friday, I'm going to be releasing a video on my journey as a game developer. But until then, I love you guys. And I hope you guys keep making amazing games and amazing art. Uh, take it easy. Goodbye.